Oh my goodness, do we have a special episode of creative teaching for you today. I cannot express how deeply excited I am uh, to host not just one guest, not just three guests like we had last time, but a plethora of participants from the Summer Arts Workshop, Dolores Mission Middle School and the LMU Art Therapy School have collaborated to create an extraordinary experience for everybody today. Um, but I, I can't introduce this all by myself. I wanna, I wanna invite my friend, Matt Bogdano, who's here with me today to hop on to creative teaching and say, what's up to the people? Hi, Matt. Hi, what's up to the people? Yeah, it's so great to have you here. Oh, just, you know, also hi to the people. My name is Laurel Butler. I'm the host of Creative Teaching. Uh, both Matt and I are broadcasting from unceded Tongva territory, uh, which is commonly known as Los Angeles. My pronouns are she and her. What are your pronouns, Matt? He and him. All right. It's so cool that you're here today, especially because initially you were scheduled to be the guest today. On the We've show. had this scheduled for a long time. Yeah. yeah. True. I was really looking forward to it because we do so much work together, activism, arts education through everyday arts and inner city arts. But uh, we're going to do something different today. We are uh, different and yet on brand. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Totally in keeping with our collab. Uh, do you want to give a little context for why we're deciding to pivot in the direction that we are? Sure. Yeah. Um, we had this plan for a long time and then we had this amazing opportunity to participate in a summer program with the LMU Art Therapy uh, program and Dolores Mission and do this middle school arts experiential for the week. And it happened to coincide with the week that I was gonna be joining you on the show. And most reasonable people would have either thought, maybe we reschedule the show for the week or maybe we've got too much going on, we can't do the program. Um, I don't think either of those thoughts went through your head. Not a reasonable person. No. no. Nope, an artist, the opposite and insta of the yeah. person. <laughs> Instantly, you were like, well, let's make it both the same thing. And let's use Friday as a way to amplify the art that the youth create over the course of the week. So, Wow, thanks um, for dropping that keyword in there. Amplify ended up being the title of the summer camp that we've done, because not only did we decide to combine a camp and a talk show, we also facilitated this camp that's been going for 14 years, which is like... Wow. We decided to do it on Zoom for the first time. We decided to incorporate the performing arts for the first time. So it's usually a visual arts camp, but you know, Matt, your primary art practice is music, yeah? It is, but you know, art is art, right? Totally, we all do a little of everything. We incorporated movement, and most importantly, we incorporated a lot of social justice themes. Every day, we sort of looked at a different question about how we can use art to amplify the voices and the perspectives of the people who need to be heard right now, especially the middle schoolers of Dolores Mission School, who turns out have some pretty amazing things to say. So I wonder if you have anything else you wanna share or should we just fast forward to the fact that we decided to make a music video, which when I say that out loud, I'm like, wow, what a banana, what a not reasonable idea. And yet we pulled it off with flying colors. Yeah, I think your question was, do I have anything I wanna say other than that? And no, that's what we did. We, we found a way to bring all the different art forms together. And the, the sort of thing that, that came to us was music video, because it's got visual art, it's got movement, it's got music. And these kids, you know, created their own movements and their own sounds and their own art. And we just kind of helped facilitate that. Yeah, yeah, use the platform that we have, including creative teaching to amplify it. Yeah, Matt and I also, for the viewers, we're both big music nerds. We grew up in the nineties, addicted to MTV. So music video is very deep to our heart. Uh, and we started with this song called Wake Up Everybody by Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes that was, I think, 1975. Mm -hmm. But then that song was covered in 2004 by like all of our faves, Mariah Carey, Monica Brandy, it was a big deal. And then again by John Legend and the Roots and Common. So that was kind of the seedling song. Um, but the track we're gonna hear is none of those, right? Can you say something real quick about the track we're gonna hear? 
Yeah, we, we started playing them these songs and, and having them write and draw things that came to mind as they were hearing um, the words and the music. And then over the course of the week, they uh, some students wrote their own lyrics and, and sang melodies. Others recorded themselves playing guitar or drum or recorded the sound of their refrigerator opening and closing. And we kind of put it all into this sound collage and created a cover, a remix, an original, some, some piece of music that you're about to hear um, that draws from all those inspirations. Some, some mashup, which hearing us reflect on it, I think is the theme of the week, is that the beauty of arts education is that it's expansive enough to comprise everything, right? That everything we wanted this camp to be found a place to be included and more, things that we couldn't have even anticipated. And Absolutely. That's sort of the beauty of it. Um, well, without further ado, I think it's time to live stream the world premiere of Wake Up Everybody, an original music video, music, visuals, choreography created by the students of Dolores Mission Middle School for the Summer Arts Workshop. Here we go. Wake up everybody. Peace. 
It's my it's my favorite song. <laughs> it's my favorite song. I've been singing it all day. Yeah. And it's just stunning to watch. I'm just stunned every time. And I'm remembering like, I mean, every part of it, even some of the editing choices. The the artists who created it are 12 years old, 13 years old, 14 years old. And they are out here paying attention to the world around them and responding to it in such creative ways. Yeah, kind of an, an amazing combination of hidden talents, you know, students who came to it with skills on guitar, on drums, on editing that we had no idea. And then also people just trying things new that they had never done and, and embracing it and just diving in head first. So it, it just came together so beautifully. Yeah, I really, this is a moment where I want to use the applause emoji that we use so much during camp. I don't know if it'll read on YouTube live, but it is, it's how I feel times 9,000. But you know what, viewers of creative teaching, don't take it from us that these young people just went through a pretty incredible, pretty meaningful roller coaster of creative experience. We are so fortunate to have some of the creators of Wake Up Everybody, the video, here with us on the show today. They're hiding backstage, but we're gonna bring them on stage. Um, we've got Ansel, we've got Zoe, we've got Annie. All of these students from Dolores Mission Middle School are here today and you can come out from, uh, from behind the, the proverbial curtain, the digital curtain and turn your cameras on um, in order to join us for the show. Hi, hi friends. It's so good to see you. Amazing. Hi, Zoe. Hi, Annie. Hi, Ansel. Hi, Patty. Welcome to Creative Teaching. It's so awesome that you're here. Um, you know, I think that maybe a great place to start for our conversation is, um, well, first of all, I just want to bring everybody's attention to Polly, the purple cat, who's also joining us. Uh, very important. Um, but I think I want to start with Patty. Patty, you are like camp counselor extraordinaire. Uh, but you started as a participant with the Summer Arts Workshop many years ago. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience and why you stuck around? Yeah, so um, I, I was one of the original participants. Uh, back then, I was recommended into this program. It wasn't so much of a choice. Um, I was brand new to Dolores Mission. I was coming into just the middle school portion, so I didn't really know anyone that year. Uh, so that summer after my first year was the first time that they ever had this program. Um, and it's it's been a long time, since 14 years. Um, and I think after the first time I was there, I realized that the bonds I was making with these people and more or less like the way I was able to express myself throughout this program really kind of was developing, you know, in it was really helping me develop into who I am now. So starting like the first couple of years, those first three years, um, I actually am still really close to some of the people that I was with during that first year. One of my best friends, Lupe, like she's still one of my closest friends this year. And I would have never talked to her had it not been for this program. Um, and then later on, a couple more people who joined years later on, they're still some of my closest friends too. There's Gio, there's Veda, who I still talk to all the time. Um, but after those first couple years, it was, I didn't really like talking. I didn't really like being a part of anything. I was that girl that like, everyone remembers me as like having like my hair over my face, like all the time. Um, and I realized that last year, um, they always had like a moment where we could speak. And what I used to be the kind of person that would like kind of whisper to someone else, be like, oh, you should say this. Like, it would be really cool if you said this. And um, until one point, like someone kind of told me like, well, why don't you say it? And, you know, at this point, I, I hadn't talked up until then. And I realized that my words kind of meant a lot because that day that I first spoke out, I think was the reason that they decided, like, let's keep this program going. And the main thing I remember saying out of that was, 
I want to come back. You know, I only had three years in middle school. I want to keep coming back. So they brought upon the junior mentor role. So that after when I was going to high school, I became a junior mentor. Um, and at the time, I think it was a brand new role. It was completely new, like uncomfortable again, which prepared me for situations later on in life, being completely new and uncomfortable to a new role. Um, learning responsibility. And at this point, it was completely different because it was now, I wasn't making the art so much. It was more, I was helping the students now make the art. I was assisting them with things. And it was a difficult thing to comprehend because I liked being there for the art. Um, and then I realized in those moments, I was realizing that it wasn't, I wasn't making one piece of art anymore. I was a part of everybody else's art. I was making tons of pieces of art. I was a part of everything. Um, and it really brought me like into this role of like leadership and um, like creative problem solving. And those things kind of followed, followed me along with like to the rest of my life. So I realized from this program I was taking upon um, not only being able to, to speak now and like being able to talk with people and really share what's inside my head. Um, and almost like this whole program, uh, when I first started, it was like having a mask on and at during this program it was the only time I could like really take off my mask and show people like this is who I really am. So um, Jessica decided to bring me back when I came in, when I went to college. Um, and to me, that was a whole new thing. I was the first one in my family to graduate high school. And then I was the first one in my family to go to college. And this program has been consistent, you know, throughout my life. And it was the one thing, no matter how my year was going, I had this program that I could go to and have this one week where I could completely just take off my mask and express myself or help other students express themselves. And in a way it was so fulfilling in every way like possible. So as a mentor now, um, it was even, even more different. It was a lot more responsibility, a lot more leadership, but a lot more problem solving. And ultimately that's what led me into my career now. Um, I'm a civil engineer. And I like to think that it is art and I like to think it is all problem solving and all of these skills I gained from this program. So in reality, like this, this is the program that was forming me throughout the years. And ultimately what started as like a program that I thought was just going to be like, oh, I'm just going to make some art was really, the project wasn't so much the individual art projects. It was me. I was my own project and I was building my identity throughout this, this whole program throughout these years. Um, so that's ultimately why I love coming back. And this is a whole new experience for me too. It's the first time it's virtual. It's very different, but I, I enjoyed it. And the outcome was amazing. I really wish I could be there with the kids in person, but I, I keep private messaging them because I, I love talking with all of them. And it's been so great. Patty, oh my gosh, my hero. Can we give like any type of applause to Patty? We have. ASL applause, we have a round of applause, we have emoji applause, but really what we have is just such profound admiration and respect for the extraordinary testimony that you just gave about the power of arts education and this thing that you just elucidated so clearly about, about how you are the work of art is so tremendous. And I think we can all take that away in terms of the, what I saw as you were talking, we talk a lot on this talk show about the concentric circles of teaching in community and how you start with yourself, right? And the moment where you come out from behind your hair and say something for the first time, and then you move out to understand that leadership is making art in community with everyone that you're in community with. And then expanding that out into civic engineering and this tremendous sphere of influence and circle of creative impact that you have is, I mean, you're, a, you're the poster child of arts education and just one of the most profoundly intelligent and unique individuals that I've had the pleasure of working with. So thank you for your testimony, for your work in this camp and for your incredible artistry in the world. And I think it's so cool to like time travel. That's another thing we talk a lot about on this show is time travel. I think it's so cool to time travel from Patty, who was part of the original cohort of the Summer Arts Workshop, all the way to now on Cell. It's your first time ever doing the Summer Arts Workshop. Is that correct? Like I heard, saw you earlier in the chat say that you were really looking forward to it, that you had sort of like heard it was going to be this exciting experience. 
and now you've finally gotten to do it, I guess the questions that I have for you, if you're willing to be our next interviewee, take yourself off of mute and let us know what were the parts of this week? What were the parts of your experience that you want to share that you felt were the most meaningful? How did it match up to your expectations? How did it how did it look different from your expectations? Yeah, what do you want to share? Um, I wanted to share that um, this art program is the best that I have ever seen and I have, have ever been in because I seen that so many people show their joy and what they feel in their expressions. And I want to keep seeing that because I know that a lot of people enjoy art and it expresses them a lot. So I'm really happy to be here. I'm really happy that I get to do stuff here. I just wish that we could all be together instead of being in, instead of being here in Zoom. I wish we could all be together in real life instead of just seeing each other through, just seeing yeah. each other through a camera. I really relate. I think that was a, a feeling that we all shared throughout the week, right? It was like, man, this isn't ideal. It would be ideal to be together. But since we are on Zoom, what are the creative ways that we can use the program to interact in ways that we wouldn't be able to if we were in real time and space and kind of use Zoom as like a creative way of being together. And one thing that I really appreciated about you as a camper in particular is your, um, your willingness and your initiative to hold your art up to the camera and let it speak for itself. So I don't know if you have any of your visual art pieces nearby and wanna showcase them, but you have a theme throughout your work of um, like really paying attention to the natural world and climate justice and environmental justice. And I wondered if you wanted to talk about that at all, um, maybe using a piece of your art as an example. I mean, yeah, I do have one art that actually kind of mean, means a lot to me. Oh, that's so gorgeous. This art kind of means a lot to me because um, a lot of trees are being set on fire. That's like trees are mostly important to us. Um, protests, a lot of people are protesting, which Black Lives Matter when it it is true, even though sometimes people treat it like if it's not. And coronavirus, a lot of people are protecting themselves, which is good at least. So we won't have to be having this a lot. And this is important because like um, people, people in this world sometimes don't really care about this and they think they could, like if it's not really important to them, but around um, around the world, people actually think that this is important and it is. It sure is. Ansel, can you do me a favor? Because I have you on speaker view, um, when you held up your artwork, I was talking and so people didn't get to see it enough. Would you be willing to hold it back up again and we'll just take five seconds to just be silent and look at your work? Amazing, thank you so much. I also want to take a moment to uh, give a shout out to um, Fabiana Rodriguez, who was one of the artists that we studied, uh, who um, incorporates a lot of natural imagery and also political messaging into her work. Um, and I can see her influences in the work that you do. And I think that was also such a special part of camp is that we got to pay attention to artists who are doing work in the social justice world and then incorporate them as influences into the work that we did. Um, I think that that makes me want to maybe bounce over to Annie because Annie, I remember meeting you on the very first day. We were in a small group together 
And um, we had just had our day one music video festival where we looked at a bunch of music videos, right? We looked at the Wake Up Everybody. We looked at Dow and the Get Down. We looked at the chicks. We looked at all kinds of stuff. And Rosalia, right? And then we got into this small group and talked about what was the imagery from those videos that stood out the most. And you had some really incredible things to say about activism. And then those themes showed up later in the week. I remember you asking, you know, can we, can we center Black Lives Matter as a message in the art that we're creating? Um, so yeah, I wonder if you maybe wanna talk about how activism shows up in your artwork. <clears throat> um. I think it's important um, that we um, like fight for people that don't get the chance to have their rights because there's like many people that do not have rights and it's important that we stand up for them and we protest for them. <clears throat> right on. And Annie, you, um, I mean, in our conversation, we talked about social justice movements and that makes me think about the fact that you were in the movement group, right? Mm -hmm. Ansel, who we just spoke to, he was in the music group and did a bunch of amazing work like contributing guitar and sounds to the track. And you were in the movement group. Do you wanna talk a little bit about what your experience was like? Um, my experience was, I liked it because we were like kind of able to exercise and also put in like our own moves that we wanted kind of. So I thought it was pretty fun. So cool. I was so glad to be able to dance with you in that space, especially because when we're learning on Zoom, we can sort of forget that we have bodies. You know, it's yeah. like we're just heads mm -hmm. in a digital space. And so yeah. to work with Marissa, also shout out to Marissa Herrera, who was on Creative Teaching a few weeks ago. She was the movement facilitator and like created such a brave and safe space to move around. I guess my last yes. question for you, Annie, is, um, is there anything that you would want to say to the audience about art, about activism, about young people and the power of young people? Is there any messages that you want to say? Um, I think that you should just like express art like any way you want, like anything you want to draw or express to people. Right on. I couldn't agree more. I didn't realize how much stuff I had to process through art, you know, cause we're all going through it, man. We're all going through this pandemic. We're all experiencing this uprising for racial justice. It's happening to all of us in all of our communities. And so we all have stuff to process. And I think that's one thing that's so great is that Matt and I, we really come from arts education, right? We're teachers, but this program happens inside of the art therapy program, which is, you know, maybe a little bit more about using art to process feelings and experiences. And that was really helpful for me. I don't know about you, Matt, but that really like shifted my experience where we still wanted to make this awesome product of a music video, but also the process was where the rich emotional experience was. Yeah, I mean, art is so therapeutic and my mother will be the first one to tell you that I was a, a very, uh, I had a lot of emotions as a 10 year old and she bought me a snare drum and two drumsticks and I would just hit them so loud and so hard every day. And it, it just changed my whole life and I've never looked back. So yeah, the, the learning is important and the, the emotional component of it is, is at the core of everything. So it's been amazing this week to, to see it through that framework. Yeah. And that they're not mutually exclusive, right? Like we learn better when we feel better. And I think we did such amazing work this week to, to be able to find that feeling of trust in everybody where we could really learn because we felt safe. Annie, Ansel, thank you so much for your shares. I just think you're some of the most brilliant people I've ever had the pleasure to be in conversation with. Uh, Zoe, my girl, I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear from you about, I mean, you are someone who it's very clear, you have an art practice. Like you're an artist and you make art on an ongoing way. And so I guess my question for you is what about this camp 
do you think you're going to take into your art practice in the future? Zoe, we can't quite hear you, my dear. I wonder if maybe if you're comfortable, you can pop out of your headphones so that the computer mic can pick you up. Is that the case for other people? Can you give me a thumbs up if you had a tricky time hearing Zoe just now? It's not just me. Okay, cool. But Zoe, I wanna hear all the beautiful, meaningful things you have to have to say. It's still, it's still silent, but I will give you a second to problem solve. Um, and Zoe, maybe while you're doing that tech stuff, I just noticed that we have a special guest in the waiting room who I'm going to, I'm gonna open up the waiting room and see if this person wants to join the chat. Ulysses, are you here? Yeah. Ulysses, do you want to turn on your video and join us? Hey, bud. Yeah. How you doing? Good. Awesome. It's so great that you're here on the talk show. Um, so Zoe is working on her microphone stuff. Zoe, you're doing a great job. Um, but while she's talking, Ulysses, I was wondering, do you want to share anything about your experience in camp this week? Do you want to share any of the art that you made? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like my experience here in the LMU program has been good because like um, I, I wasn't really into art that much, but now that I've been in this program, like I'm like drawing more and like making stuff more often, so. That's so awesome. I think that's one of our biggest goals is to sort of um let everybody know that everybody's an artist. You know what I mean? But wait, I have a question for you because I feel like on our first day of camp, you mentioned that you had created a pretty big artistic masterpiece and you shared it with all of us. Um, do you want to talk at all about your helmet? Yeah, let me just get it. Yes. Oh man, I'm so excited for you creative teaching viewers. You are about to witness a true masterpiece. This was not a part of the curriculum. It's just that Ulysses happens to be a master creator of the cardboard helmet. Ulysses, can you hold it up and show it for a while so that the audience can see? I mean, applause for the cardboard helmet, am I right? What a masterpiece. Um, Ulysses, thank you so much for sharing all of that. I will never forget the piece that you created. I think it was day three. You made a watercolor that just said, no justice, no peace in like a purple and blue. And, uh, and I had to screenshot it because I thought it was so extraordinary. Hey, there it is. Yeah. Can you bring it nice and close to the camera so we can show the... Awesome. Thank you. Uh, I just, there's something about the combination of the, um, the words and then the soothing aesthetic of the blue and purple watercolor. One of our camp participants, Jane, who's not on the talk show, um, introduced that concept early on of a soothing aesthetic. This young woman is in sixth grade and this is the vocabulary that she used to talk about the work that we were doing in camp. And, um, and that has really stuck with me that when we're thinking, Annie, I think you talked about it too, that when we're doing activism and justice work, how can we do it in a way that also can, can help us retain a feeling of calm so that we can stay in the struggle. 
right? Um, and resource ourselves in that way. Yeah. Also shout out to Jane, uh, who I just mentioned, she also wrote the lyrics for the song that we just listened to. So, you know, I, I mean, I'm glad I wish she was on the talk show, but also I'm so glad that she took the break because she deserves it. Cause she worked so hard this week and took so many risks and did so many, uh, new things. So shout out, um, to Jane. So Zoe, can we do a little mic check and see how your sound is? Do you want to unmute yourself and see if you have sound? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So my question for you, but you can really talk about whatever you want, is um, what did you, what are you taking away from this camp that you think you're going to incorporate into your art process in the future? Um, probably to like try and put more meaning into what I do, like in my art, like to try and like make art for causes. Right on. Are there causes that feel really important to you that you um, feel like bringing your art into, or do you feel like you're going to do some more thinking and research about activism and in order to figure out how to connect the dots? Yeah, to try and do like more research on this stuff. Awesome. Can you tell us about Polly? Oh yeah, Polly. As, like, what, like, what would you really actually want to know about this little character? I think I want to know the story. Like, where does she come from? How did you invent her? And um, yeah, that's, that's, I think, the question. What's her story? I was, for some reason, I was just thinking of, like, the Pink Panther. And I was like, hmm, maybe I just, what if I change it to a color that I, that is my favorite color, which is purple. And that's kind of how I just made her. I can actually quickly show the very first drawing of her. Let me get it out. This is the very first thing I ever did of her. Wow. <laughs> and what was the other stuff about her that you wanted to know? Um, I guess I'm curious what Polly means to you. You know, why um, this, this character has been so important to this week that we've had together. Polly has been kind of the mascot of camp. So yeah, what does Polly mean to you as an artist? I guess like a little like fun little character, just like a really easy thing to draw, like a fun little character. It is like a nice little simple thing. I love that. You know what that reminds me of is the fact that our art making practice is like a friend that we have for our entire lives. My friend Beth, who's also my mentor and my, you know, art sort of guru, she said often like make friends with your artist self because that's a lifelong relationship. And um, I'm thinking about on cell earlier today, you were saying, I'm so sad that camp is gonna be over. We got this amazing week together and now it's gonna be over. But what's so awesome is that our art making selves they're not going anywhere. We can make art tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day and keep sharing it with the world in all these different ways. And so for myself, when I might feel lonely, I can always go to my art. Like, like Zoe can always go to Polly because it's always there, you know? And the same way that Patty was saying earlier that your art practice shows up in all the aspects of your life. It shows up in your engineering. It shows up in your leadership. It shows up in your relationships and your friends. Shout out to Lupe. Shout out to all the friends from, you know, Summer Arts Workshop of years past. Like friendship is an art. So these parts of ourselves and Ulysses was saying he didn't think of himself as an artist and now he does. And how cool that that's something that you can hold on to forever. Yeah. Um, like nothing I wanted to say. Yeah, remember, go ahead. Remember like, the little like snow fox that I drew in that one class? Do you have snow it? fox? Can we see it? I I drew the little snow fox and Polly. <laughs> you like it? Snow fox and Polly. They have a little cuddly relationship. <laughs> oh, that is so special. It's like taking a little nap. I was like, I actually named the Snow Fox Piper. 
Oh man, if anyone who's watching this show is looking to hire a cartoonist, I, I know I know one. Um, I also, uh, you know, this video that we're watching is going to be on YouTube. And so I will put in the YouTube notes the links to the video so people can watch it. I'll put the links to the other versions of the song so that people can listen to that. Um, and to the Summer Arts Workshop so people can look at the history of the Summer Arts Workshop in case they want to get involved. But right now, I just wonder, is there anything else that anybody else wants to share while it's just you know, this team of Dolores Mission School students. Yeah, Ulysses, I see your hand up. Uh, go ahead, I'll spotlight you. Um, like, in the little notepad that, like, you guys gave us, um, I've been drawing, like, some cartoon characters. Like, I look at them at the screen, on the screen, and then I just try to um, do them, and then, so first I, I, I made Donald Duck. And then I made Scooby-Doo. Wow. And SpongeBob. And then um, Dipper from Gravity Falls. Stitch. And Timmy Turner from the show. My jaw is on the floor. That was incredible. Patty, I just saw you give Ulysses a little shout out in the chat. Do you want to tell him what you said um, here in the here in the talk show? Oh well, first of all, I really want the stitch. I'll buy it off you. <laughs> I really want it, but I it was so many. I think immediately as you put it up on the screen, your first cartoon, I my mouth just like dropped. They were so amazing. They were so good. I've never seen is something so amazing. Wow. So incredible. So incredible. So um, I'm wondering, Annie, do you have a piece of your visual art that's nearby? Just something you could pick up and grab. I'm wondering if oh. we want to. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I have one of them because the other one I don't really have with me. The one I drew of the uh, Black Lives Matter, I don't have it with me, but I have a different one. Um, I'll get it. I'd love to give I'll our do viewers... this one. Yeah, Annie, will you keep holding that up? And actually, I'm wondering if we can give our viewers like a visual gallery where everybody, can you just grab a piece of art that you've made over the course of the week um, and just hold it up to the camera? so that we can see it. Yeah, Matt did one using a digital program. Um, and we can just give the viewers of Creative Teaching a little colorful gallery of some art that was created over the course of the week. So of course we wouldn't be able to create all of this amazing art if we hadn't had the guidance of some really, really incredible graduate student mentors from the LMU Art Therapy Clinic. So really quick, let's all give us, give some virtual high fives to just this crew right here. Dolores Mission Middle School students, Patty, Matt, I love y'all, high five, high five. That's how, that's how we high five on Zoom. And now I would love to invite some special, extra special guests the graduate students of the LMU Art Therapy Clinic are also hiding backstage. They wanted to pop on at the end and just let you guys know how much they love you and how impressed they are with you and how much they appreciate you. So if you're backstage, Alejandra, Britt, Caitlin, Emily, Elise, John, Laura, Pauline, Susan, Marissa, Amber, Jessica, you can turn your cameras on. Hi, team. Yeah, team. Oh man, it's so great to see you here. So um, we, you know, have about 15 minutes left with our show. Our hearts are so full. It's such an incredible celebratory day. I wonder if we just want to, you know, go down the alphabet and everybody can kind of take a, take a little, take a little 30 second shout out. 
um, to let to let our Dolores Mission students and the viewers of Creative Teaching know what this experience has meant to you. So maybe we'll start with Britt. Yeah, I'm just so amazed by everything that these students have put together this week. I remember when we first started singing over Zoom the first day and someone said, oh my gosh, my brothers are looking at me like I'm crazy. But they, all the students just put themselves out there and the video is so amazing. And I keep watching it and each time I'm more and more inspired. So thank you for letting me be a part of that. Right on. Um, how about Caitlin B? Hey everyone. Um, yeah, I second everything that uh, Britt said as well. And I also just want to say that it's just been like a pleasure and a real privilege to work with all of you this week and kind of witness the beautiful and thoughtful ways that you each use your imaginations and kind of the compassion, the capacity you have for compassion um, and to create art and music and move in a way that really strengthens and amplifies not only your individual voice, but the collective voice of the community. And it really gives me a lot of hope for the future and the capacity you all have to bring a lot of change to communities and the world. And I just bravo to your bravery and vulnerability this week. And I'm really truly inspired. Thanks, Caitlin. Um, Let's see, is Katie? Yeah, hey Katie, how about you? Yeah, so um, I just wanted to say it was really so amazing to work with everyone. And um, I just wanted to say a highlight of the week was seeing everyone kind of come together as sort of this little mini community and work collaboratively to make art that can carry a really beautiful message. And it's also really interesting to see like how the students and all the participants um, use our voices in a way to convey our beliefs on social justice and get our message across. I think it was really amazing. Right on. Um, let's see if my alphabetics serve me correctly. I think it's Emily. Yeah. Cool. Hi. Um, yeah, it was just such a privilege to be able to uh, share this experience with everyone this week. Um, I think like Making the art was, I think, definitely very courageous. Um, so much bravery was shown and um, from like the rhythm, like the music to the art to the movement um, was really just amazing to see um, our youth, our entire community really just convey a message um, that um, could be shared with the rest of the world. Um, and so it was just been such an honor to be able to be here. Thanks, Emily. Truly an honor. Um, how about, I think it's Elise, yeah? Cool. Uh, so my background is in the visual arts. So um, music and movement is kind of scary for me. And I got the impression that a lot of the kids felt the same way initially. So it was really inspiring to see them just exploring so courageously and creating this really safe and supportive environment for each other to do that. Totally. Yeah, thanks for naming that. That, you know, Patty told us that historically, the LMU Summer Arts Workshop has been mostly a visual arts program, right? So to incorporate the performing arts along with all of this internet newness um, was an experiment. And we all participated in that experiment. And I would say experiment results are in and it was, a success. Let's see. Um, after Elise is probably John. Yeah. Yeah, let's go there. <laughs> so uh, to all of the young scholars and how you participated was beautiful. Um, the fact that we're all in each other's homes, literally, um, not physically, but through through the internet and being that vulnerable and being able to share so much is just it's a highlight to yourselves and your compassion for each other and your supportiveness and i think that hands down that is the most beautiful thing that this world can see right now that's it right on yeah giving the world what it needs it's like medicine 
Um, after Jay comes L. Laura, do you want to share some thoughts? Definitely. I think, you know, even though we're in the middle of a pandemic, like John said, it's amazing that we can still use Zoom to come together in this very connected way. I felt like I really got to know everyone. And it was just awesome to see these middle schoolers use art to really explore activism and find their voices and share their message with the community. And I'm just really thankful to be a part of it. And thank you to the Dolores Mission students for your courage. Thanks, Laura. Um, I think it's Pauline now, yeah? Hi. I am blown away by the willingness of students to step outside of their comfort zones and tap into their creative power within and to be the art. Activism is so important. And I hope everyone continues to find their inner power through creativity and use it to empower communities in the spirit of justice and love. Oh, Pauline, I love working with, turns out middle schoolers and grad students. So eloquent, <laughs> so articulate, so brilliant. Um, let's see, I think our last grad student is, uh, to share today is Susan. Susan, you wanna let us know what's on your mind? Hi everyone. I just wanted to um, share that I loved being a part of this program with everyone. I was so inspired by everyone's creativity and courage and trying new things. Thank you to the students for sharing your incredible selves and sharing powerful messages and what you want to change and what you want to create. I feel so hopeful for the future with all of you in it. Thanks grad students. I couldn't have said it better myself. And uh, to all the Dolores Mission School students who are watching this, um, everything that we're saying is, um, is soul food for you to put in the little pocket of your heart for the future. If you're having a you know bummer of a day, just remember that somewhere out there, there's a dozen graduate students who think you are the coolest. Um, so, there are three more people who I really want to hear from while we're all here together in this beautiful family community. And I am so excited for the viewers of Creative Teaching. You know her, you love her. She's my sister in the arts education game. And, uh, and she's back with us again, Marissa Herrera, movement facilitator extraordinaire. What's up, girl? Hey, no other place I would rather be on a Friday but back in this virtual world with all these incredible artists and you, Laurel. I mean, rarely am I ever at a loss for words, but my energy and my spirit and my heart are just like saying everything right now. Um, it has been a really trying time for a lot of us, you know, as adults for, you know, our audience members who, you know, a lot of them are also working you know, in the field of education. And as hard as it is for us, um, I still ask myself every day, I can't imagine what it's like um, to be a youth in this time. And to see these young people, um, you know, embrace what the realities of what is going on in our world on, on so many different levels and to be able to face it and address it with courage and creativity um, was so inspiring. I, I said it like all week long, like I've cried so, I've cried a lot of sad tears over the last couple of weeks. This week, I got to cry tears of joy and hope and love because I am so inspired that even in this dark time, our art is an opportunity for us to address those things. But like I said earlier, to amplify it with joy and, and love and peace because we need that. And I believe that artists, um, I've, I've said that we're not first responders, but throughout history, we've been the first to respond. And that is something that these young artists um, modeled for us. We came in as like, oh, you know, we're the teachers, you know, we're the ones with the experience. All week long, we've all been teachers and we've all been learners. 
And I wanna thank the, the students from, um, from Dolores Mission Middle School and all of our grad students and you know the other facilitators um, for making this such a safe space. And um, I, I am a, a better person going in, in, into the rest of my life and, um, and I'm inspired. So thank you all for, for allowing me to be part of this process. Keep creating. Mm. Man, I'm just thinking back, Marissa, to our episode um, a few weeks ago where we talked about how arts education doesn't always look like this, right? There are some arts programs where it's not about listening to students' voices. It's about here, here's how to learn to draw a flower the correct way. And if you don't do it this way, you're not doing it right. And this program was so representative of all of the things that we talked about in that episode, the best and most beautiful ways that arts education can look in the community and in a, a culturally responsive way. Yeah, um, and, and, it's re and it's refreshing and we show that it works. It, it, it truly works, it truly works, trust the process. And I mean, speaking of trust the process, uh, I think it's very, very clear to everybody that none of this would be possible without the program co-directors, both of whom are dear, dear friends and colleagues of mine. So let's give a super warm welcome with whatever type of applause you want for Amber and Jessica, the co-directors of the LMU Art Therapy Clinic Summer Arts Workshop. Hi. Hi. Oh, I, love it. I, I love this kind of applause. It's so visual. <laughs> Thanks for having us, Laurel. I mean, so exciting. Yeah. When I say my pleasure, it's not just a polite phrase. It's literally a pleasure to do this. Um, should we do alphabetic again? Amber, do you want to do sure. what's coming up for you in this moment? I don't know that I have that much to add that everyone hasn't said. I just think everyone spoke so eloquently and I absolutely agree and amplify what you've said. And I think for me, like what really stands out is reverse mentorship. Because I know we come in, the adults, the grownups, the student, grad students, we come in feeling like we're mentoring youth. And every year for me, what stands out is how much I'm gaining from the experience and how much I learn from our participants. So I would just add a thank you to all of our viewers, our students that are here with us today, and the viewers who are maybe watching the YouTube live just a most sincere thank you. A big thank you for being vulnerable and showing up and being here. Mm, thanks, Amber. You know, a lot of people who watch this show are sort of education nerds like me. And we talk a lot about reciprocal pedagogy, right? Paulo Freire and Bell Hooks and these people who talk about how student is teacher and learner at the same time. And this idea of reverse mentorship is such a beautiful way to frame that. So thanks for that little vocab nugget. Yeah. Um, Jessica, my dear friend who I've worked with for so many years, my neighbor, my sister in the trenches, thank you for inviting me and Everyday Arts and 4C Lab into this process. It's been so fun. How are you feeling? Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm just exploding with pride. I mean, this is doubly doubly. It's because these are the graduate students are, are my students and the participants, you know, are also students. And so I just have this, and Amber used to be a student. I mean, it's, I'm just, I'm really speechless. And every year, just to echo what Amber says, it, it, it feels really ambitious. And we have this moment where we waver and every single year, mm -hmm. these kids show up and just blow it out of the water. I mean, it is so incredible, their passion, their commitment, their vulnerability, the, the risk taking that goes on. It's, it's such a privilege and so beautiful to watch. And I, I just have to say, I just love your love so much. It's, um, it's so powerful to experience. I wanna be in these imaginary worlds that you are, are going to create. I have no doubt that these spaces that you talked about throughout the week, where there's love and justice and peace, we're, we're gonna be there because of you. And I'm, I'm just so thankful to, to be a tiny little piece of this experience. 
Mm. <laughs> Take a minute to breathe that in, right? Yeah, to applaud and to celebrate and also to really breathe in what Jessica just said, which echoed so many things that other people have said about, about hope, right? And about the idea that, that art and creativity and gathering in community and collective community to bear witness to the things around us is a critical part of that process of building the world that we want to see. Oh my gosh, thanks you guys. Ansel's giving us some applause. We're giving some ASL applause. We're giving some emoji applause. You can't have too many ways to applaud. That's what it's all about. So really quick before we wrap, Ansel, I'm seeing that you've also used the raised hand function in Zoom. Um, do you have anything that you uh, want to share before we wrap for the day? I just want to honor the fact that you raised your hand. Um, the thing I would like to say um, is, uh, sorry, my bad. Um, I would like to say that I hope everyone has a good day. Stay hopeful. And, <laughs> and hope that coronavirus is gone so we can all be with our, with our friends and with our families. And yeah. Right on. Yeah. I mean, those are the lyrics of the songs, right? Wake up all the doctors so we can all be safe. And that's really the moment that we're at. We all take care of one another. Um, so viewers of Creative Teaching, we always end our show with a request for, um, like you can tip if you want to, by making a donation for us to a social justice organization. Today, we're just gonna ask that uh, that, that donation is a non-monetary donation of investment in a young person in your life. So whoever's watching this show, when you walk away from here, think about a young person in your life who you can show up for and let them know that you believe in them and that you wanna resource their creativity and that you want to be in a reverse mentorship relationship with them and that you're rooting for them um, because they are the future. So that's the way that you can leave a tip for creative teaching today is a non-monetary investment or a monetary investment. Shoot, buy some watercolors for your favorite young person in your life today, right? Um, all right, if everybody uh, wants to meet back in our main Zoom room, so the place we usually go for camp, uh, that link is on the bulletin board and um, maybe uh, Amber or somebody can stick it in the chat. Thank you. Yes, Amber, tech wizard. I wish we had more time for all the shout outs, but we'll do it back in camp. Let's take ourselves off mute and just say bye and thank you. Bye-bye.